to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to talk about how to get over a 90% on the HESI A2 exam, which is an exam I took back in May. I took only four categories, those being anatomy, reading comprehension, grammar, and math. If you guys would like to know what materials I used, how I broke down my study schedule, and some actual details from the exam on each category, keep on watching. Before we start today's video, I wanted to let you guys know my overall score as well as my individual scores in the four categories that I took. So my overall score was a 96%. How I got that was a 100 in anatomy, a 96 in both reading and math, and then a 94 in grammar. But now let's move on to the actual material that I used. So I used two physical books and then two online things. For the physical books, I used the Mamatrix HESI A2 Secret Study Guide and then I used the Elsevier HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review. These are both around $30 to $40. They are not needed, but if you could buy either one of them, I would totally recommend it. If you guys want a little more detail on each of the categories, I recommend the Mama Tricks. But if you're looking for a more straight to the point thing, I would recommend this one. It is a little thinner and therefore doesn't provide a lot of information. And this one also comes from the company that makes the HESI exam. So they give you kind of some key ideas as to what will be shown on the actual exam. It gives you hints, I guess you could say. Um, but I used these two physical books. The two online things that I used were Nurse Hub and Quizlet. Nurse Hub does cost some money. It is about $20 a month, but I did get mine for $10 because I got it during nursing week. But Nurse Hub does have a lot of practice questions and it'll give you a description as to why the answer is right or wrong, which I thought was very helpful. I personally like to study more with practice questions, so Nurse Hub was very helpful during the two weeks going into my exam. And then Quizlet is totally free. There is a lot of practice questions as well as just flashcards for vocabulary if you need to review and stuff. So I feel like Quizlet is very helpful for anyone that is on a budget. I totally recommend just looking up HESI A2 exam, anatomy, math, whatever, practice questions or vocabulary, whatever it is you're looking for. And there will be hundreds of Quizlets out there that you can use for free. But now let's move on to how I broke down my study schedule using the two physical books and then the two online things. So I actually started studying a month before my actual exam date. During the first two weeks, I used both physical books. I would break down my studying into the subcategories that each section had and would handwrite my notes on my iPad. I thought handwriting was so much better because I was able to retain more information. And if you have the time, I would totally recommend you handwriting your notes or at least just jotting down notes on the margins of the book and highlight whatever you think is important. If I were to go back and retake this exam and I would have to choose between one of the books, I would really recommend this one. It is very to the point. It doesn't give you so much fluff that you think you may need and then at the end of the day you don't really need. So I feel like this was very helpful. But if you're looking to get more detail, maybe you don't feel that confident in one of the sections, then I would recommend this one. But honestly, for me, I thought I would just do better just with this one. And then during the last two weeks, I honestly just used Nurse Hub and Quizlet. Again, I love to study with practice questions and using Nurse Hub, I was able to see how the questions would be formatted for the actual exam. I was also given a description as to why the answer was correct or wrong. So I thought that was very helpful. And then Quizlet has a lot of practice questions and then questions that are extremely similar to the actual exam. And I'll give you a special Quizlet in a little bit. But honestly, at the end of the day, I feel that I was just fine with Nurse Hub and Quizlet. I did not think these books were needed. But then again, if you don't feel that confident and need some extra information, I would really recommend these two books. Lastly, I wanted to talk about some topics that would be on the actual exam as well as some common questions that I saw amongst all four sections that I took. First, I want to start off with grammar, which is my hardest section. It is an average of 55 questions. And I say it is my hardest because I studied the wrong things. I spent so much time reviewing verbs and adverbs and adjectives and present and past and all of these things when really 40 to 45 of my questions were 
what word or phrase fits in the sentence and then what word or phrase does not fit in the sentence. I really wish I was exaggerating, but that's all that was on my exam. I feel like it threw me off completely because I was studying all of these different topics just for a majority of my questions to be that. I did see some other questions whether it was just one or two. So I did want to give you some details as to what you should review either way because just because my exam was like that doesn't mean your exam will too. But some topics that you should review are the eight parts of speech, those being verbs, noun, pronouns, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, conjugations, and interjections. If you see me looking down, I'm looking at my iPad. And then we have indirect and direct objects in a sentence, some independent and dependent clauses, compound sentence, compound complex or complex sentences, know how to distinguish between them, some dangling misplaced modifiers, and then tricky word pairs. I feel like that's something you should really review. I had about two to three of those questions. Some of the tricky word pairs are effect and effect, further and further, lie, lay, that, which, few, less, and then the most common there, there, and there. Um, those are the topics that I reviewed the most and that I saw other students also review. I think those are very important topics that you should look over whether you know them or not just to get a refresher as to what you will be looking at. And yeah, that's it for grammar. The next section is math, which again has about 55 questions average. It wasn't my hardest, but it was the most time consuming one as I did have to do the actual work for all of them or I did have to use a calculator and therefore it took me time. Some things that I think you guys should review or know when you take the exam is ratio, proportions, fractions, whatever you want to call them. Know how to do them with multiplication, division, subtraction, addition, all that good stuff. Next would be word problems. Know what, what number would go where in the equation. Make sure you know how to do that. And then know your basic addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. What I would mainly say from these is know the vocabulary, meaning know what a dividend is, a divisor, quotient, product. Um, I had a very hard time knowing the difference between dividend and divisor. So there are questions that will ask you, what is the dividend of this equation or what is the divisor? What is the quotient? What is the product? It won't just give you the equation. It will actually give you the problem in a full sentence. Also know your PEMDAS. That is parentheses, exponent, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. And know in what order they go because if you do do them in a wrong order, you will get a different answer. So know how to use that. Next up would be percentages and decimals. Know how to go from one to the other because I did have a handful of those questions. Whether it's a big number or a small number, know how to do them. It's usually just like the two to the left and then two to the right, but know how to do those. Also know how to take percentages from a whole number. An example would be what is 19% of 178? That kind of has to do with fractions a little bit. So just know how to do those as well. And I feel like you should be good with the percentages of a whole number. And the most important is conversions. I feel like that was the most time consuming for me when it came to actually studying because I felt very confident in every other part of math, but conversions, I knew my basics such as inches to centimeters and feet to inches and stuff like that. But when it came to other larger numbers, I was like, what are you talking about? So make sure you know them because you are not giving a cheat sheet on the actual day of the exam. Something that I did a little side tip is I actually studied them like 10 minutes before I went to my actual exam. And then the first thing I did was jot down all the conversions that I knew possible that could possibly be on the exam. Just have them on your paper or your whiteboard like I did. And you don't have to start off with the math section, but if you do, I feel that it's very helpful just to jot them down really quickly and that way you have them since they're fresh in your mind. But yes, know your conversions, know your prefixes such as kilo, milli, centi. Knowing those will help you understand like kilograms and milliliters and centimeters and stuff like that. So know your prefixes, know your Roman numerals, one through 10, 10, 20, 30s, 40s, whatever, 100 and 500, 1,000 and 5,000, 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 and 500,000, and then a million. And know how to write those in Roman numerals because sometimes you are given like a whole year, I guess you could say, and you have to know what numbers go in what order. 
Next up would be military time. I feel like that's very simple. Um, just add 12 to the number or what I do is just subtract 2 from the number. Let's say it's giving me 15. I subtract 2 and then it is 3 o'clock. Um, that's a tip that I know. I feel like it's much easier than using um, the 12. I just subtract 2. Know your temperatures. Know how to go from Celsius to Fahrenheit and Fahrenheit to Celsius. Know what your lengths your weight, your mass, and your volume. Something that helped me for the volume was drawing out this image. I thought that is very helpful. A lot of people use the gallon man, I think it's called, but I used this. I thought this was much more helpful since I could just doodle it on my paper or my whiteboard before anything else and then I kind of just counted. <laughs> but that is it for the math section. Again, review your conversions. Again, that was my most difficult one. I had a handful of conversions, but I think everything else is very basic and math that you kind of learned in elementary school. Um, and yeah. And the last section would be anatomy with an average of 30 questions. If I'm being completely honest, I thought this section was going to be the hardest one when I found out that I needed to take it for the HESI to the point that I thought I was going to need weeks of studying just for anatomy itself. But there is a magical Quizlet out there that somebody made. Whoever you are, thank you so much. They have word by word questions that show up on the actual HESI exam. So that is the only thing that I studied. I did not use any additional resources and I just spent my time doing flashcards on that Quizlet and just reviewed it as much as I could. But something that you should know is that you should know just the basic things of anatomy. So I do recommend you take the HESI after you are done with your anatomy classes. Just you have basic knowledge on certain topics, which I will tell you right now. Those being layers of the skin, know your directions, such as superior, inferior, anterior, posterior, medial, lateral, those kind of stuff. Know what your body planes, such as sagittal and transverse. And then from your skeletal system, know your bone names. I feel like bone names are something that you kind of need to know for anatomy. So try to know just the basic names of your bones. It'll be extremely helpful when there's questions that are, what bone is superior to this one? Um, there was a couple questions like that. Also know your axial and appendicular skeletal, which are like specific bone sections that you need that are divided into those two. Know your bone types, your flat, irregular, sesamoid, long and short, I believe they are. And then know your joints whether what connects to bones, which one connects to muscles and that stuff. For your circulatory system, know blood flow. Know in what direction it goes, what part of the heart goes from deoxygenated to oxygenated. Know the difference between your atrium and ventricle, both of them being left or the right. And honestly, that is all you need to know for anatomy. I 110% recommend you read the Quizlet. If you need any additional information, there's always other Quizlets that will have vocabulary as to what certain things mean. But honestly, the Quizlet alone helped me pass with 100% on anatomy. Before this video ends, I realized last night while editing it that I did not talk about the reading comprehension at all. So here we are the next day. The reading comprehension section consists of an average of 55 questions. If I'm being honest, I barely studied the reading section at all. I only read what was in the two books that I talked about earlier and did a handful of practice questions. But besides that, I barely touched the reading section, mainly because I thought that it was going to be similar to that that you see in a standardized exam, like the ones you would take in middle school or high school or whatever it is. And in a way they were, the questions were sort of formatted the same but the passages were much, much shorter on the HESI exam. The passages were about five to six sentences long and that's why there were a lot of them. Each of the passages had three to five questions and those common questions that I saw are the following. The biggest one that I saw was what is the main idea? I feel that almost every passage that I read had a question asking for the main idea. Next is what is the author's main purpose? Is it there to inform you? Is it there to persuade you? Is it there to entertain you? Next is what sentence is more of a fact than an opinion or an opinion than a fact? I feel that those are kind of 
very easy to point out because you usually have some feeling attached to it it was amazing it was the worst it was the best that, that type of thing so i could easily point out the opinion and then what can you conclude or assume from the overall passage or a specific sentence that they would give you and then lastly the biggest thing that i think you should know topic wise is know how to use your context clues i feel like there was a handful of questions asking what was the synonym or antonym of a specific word or even the definition of it and that's honestly the most common questions that i saw in all of the passages now let's move on to the outro but that is it for today i hope you guys found today's video helpful in the description below i will be adding a link to a document that will have links to all of the books nurse hub and quizzes that i used as well as some study tips and just a summary and bullet points as to what I mentioned would be most commonly seen in the four sections that I took and some topics that I think you guys should review. I wish you guys all good luck and I hope you all get over a 90% whether it's your first try or your second try. But again, I wish you guys all good luck. If you liked today's video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!